Hey guys, it's Brian from Phone Arena, and today we're going to take a look at the Samsung Ative S Neo from Sprint. Now this is the second Windows Phone 8 device offered by Sprint. The first, of course, is the HTC 8 XT, which we just looked at a few weeks ago. As you can see, the Ative looks very similar to the Ative S that we saw in International. Um, however, on the back, a uh, little difference. First off, it is blue instead of the silvery gray. And then the speakers moved up here from down along the bottom. But overall, it's pretty similar to the uh, same thing as the Ative S. Now, one of the standout features of the Ative S Neo is the 4.8 inch HD display. When we say HD, this is a 720p display. We do not have any 1080p devices available with Windows Phone due to software limitations at the moment, although that will change. At 4.8 inches, the Ative S Neo does have the largest display of any Windows Phone device. Nokia 625 is a little bit smaller at 4.7, not too noticeable. However, it has a much lower resolution screen, so the PPI is significantly different. Now, Nokia's 920 series and the 1020 series both have 4.5 inch displays, which offer 720p, so those actually have a higher PPI than the Ative S Neo here. However, the Neo is a bit bigger, and it is a very, very good screen. Um, on the Ative S, we saw an AMOLED display, which we're pretty used to from Samsung. Uh, this is actually a TFT LCD, and it performs brilliantly. Not sure if it's picking up on the camera there, but the viewing angles are excellent. Even in direct light, it does not wash out. And overall, it's just a very good screen. Multimedia looks fantastic on it. Beyond the screen, there isn't a whole lot to say about the Ative S Neo. As you can see, the design is very similar to the Galaxy S series, especially the Galaxy S3. You have your physical Windows button down here, and then you do have capacitive keys that light up as you press them. Volume rocker on the one side, and a power button and a physical camera shutter key on the other. Now this power button is a little bit lower than we're used to, so it took a bit of getting used to, but not a huge deal, and as you wrap your hand around, it does fit pretty nicely right on your index finger. But overall, it's the same plastic construction that we're getting used to with Samsung. They've obviously uh, decided to go that route in their design direction, as opposed to someone like HTC or Apple, of course, using premium materials on their devices. So. Just because the plastic doesn't mean it's cheap, however, it just doesn't exude the same kind of feel that you get when you pick up an HTC device. But it's nice, it is very firm and sturdy, you squeeze on it, there are no creaks in the plastic, so it is quality material even if it isn't something like aluminum or soft touch or anything of that nature. So this is obviously a more muted design than we're used to seeing with most Windows Phone devices going after a little bit more of the business class here. Uh, but overall, it's a good design, it's very familiar, and we don't have any complaints about it other than it's a little bit uninspired. Now in terms of software, it is a Windows Phone device, so if you've seen one, you've pretty much seen them all. There are a few preloaded apps on here, something like the Mini Diary or Magna Camera, um, but nothing too, too drastic. Uh, we have Scout and also a program called Local Scout, both from Telenav. And what they will do is offer you, um, so this is Local Scout, and you can see it's offering some suggestions on what to eat or see and do, where we can go shopping. Um, the Scout program is your navigation, so very similar to what Google Maps offers in their new recommendation engine. Um, Samsung also has this Now program. Pretty cool. It has a quick overview of your weather, your news. You can set up stock quotes, um, get a little currency conversion. So. Nothing too crazy, but is definitely a nice quick uh, glance app that you can see real quickly. But overall, everything's pretty much the same as any other Windows device. Load up Internet Explorer here. You can see we've got our page going on. Now one thing we do see is, is if you can notice down in the status bar here, and let's get back, we can see that it's not fully loaded. Um, it tells us this all the time. Um, it never really fully loads most pages, but as we browse through it, there's really not too much missing. Um, it's going to load all our pictures, all our content. We can still fully interact with the page as we would expect. We've got the double tap, pinch to zoom, all that good stuff. So 
Internet Explorer 10 is a very good mobile browser. Uh, maybe not our top pick, but that's what you get with Windows Phone out of the box, and we really have no complaints about it. So, in general, it's a pretty snappy experience here. Um, it's powered by a dual core 1.4 gigahertz Snapdragon S400 processor, and for the most part, it ran pretty smoothly, but there are times when we try to open up apps or when we're just kind of glancing back and forth between things where we definitely noticed a little lag. So um, it's not quite as quick as even the HTC that we reviewed a few days ago or a few weeks ago. Um, but overall, you're not going to notice too much of a, a lag going around the system. Now, if you're on Sprint and you want Windows Phone, you are really limited in your choices. You now have the Ativas Neo as well as the HTC 8XT. Now we reviewed the HTC 8XT not too long ago, so we're not going to go too much into it, but what we will say is that the Ativas Neo just kind of underperformed for us. It doesn't really have any standout feature other than the, the display. Like we said, the Nokias have a little bit higher pixel density, although of course Nokias are not available with Sprint. But a big screen with a 720p display isn't really anything that's too mind-blowing right now, especially with the fat flat interface that Windows has. It doesn't pop like it does on something like Android or when the iPhone came out with the Retina display. Um, Samsung's really just not differentiating itself from other manufacturers. The HTC has their premium design, they have the Beats audio integration and the Boom Sound speakers. Nokia has their pure view cameras and Samsung's just kind of going along. Um, it almost seems like they're just putting out devices very similar to the Galaxy S and seeing if that familiarity will uh, resonate with customers. It does have an 8 megapixel camera back here and again that performance was kind of underwhelming. It just it took okay pictures but it didn't take anything great. There are no glaring problems with it but at the same time um, definitely nothing that you're going to be doing beyond uploading some pictures on the web and sharing with friends. Um, another disappointment with the device was the call quality. Caller said that we sounded uh, very mute, muffled, had some echo problems, and overall said this was one of the poorer phones that we've ever tested. So some issues with that as well. So overall, with the combined package, we're going to suggest that if you want Windows Phone on Sprint, save your 50 bucks, go with the HTC. If you want a great screen, we're not going to recommend against the Samsung. It's just we feel that the money is better spent elsewhere unless you really need that great screen.